Who rebuilds Frankfurt more successfully on Football Manager? Is it me or is it my dad? Well, to determine this, we have a point system we will implement over five seasons to decide an ultimate winner. It is one point for a higher league finish or on the same finish, the higher points tally. Three points for a domestic cup win, four points for a domestic league win, five points for Europa slash Conference League win, seven points for a Champions League win, and of course, three bonus points for the total accumulated points across five seasons. So let's check out Dad's season one first. Dad, in case you didn't know, Eintracht Frankfurt. That's my favourite German team. Is it really? It is. You know, I've never knew. If you hadn't said that, I wouldn't have known that. I've never mentioned it on no, here. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Uh, no, but no. there we go for you bingo cards. Today, we're doing an Eintracht Frankfurt versus rebuild. Who rebuilds Frankfurt better between me and you? So, no pressure. Well, you, you're definitely going to be trying to get to win this one, aren't you? It being your favourite team. So, I mean, I, the pressure's all on me, I think, yeah. Any chance to beat you, I'm I'm well up for it. But yeah. when it's with my one of my favourite teams, then, yeah, we've got to go for it. Challenger, now, then. Challenger. Exactly. Yeah. Now, in the summer, they obviously sold Kolo Muani, who yeah. is a big prospect in the world football, 24 years old. They sold him after a decent season, getting 15 goals for Frankfurt for £77 million. They didn't really replace him, no. if I'm honest. They so didn't bring in anybody. That's the first place I know I've got a weakness in the net. Exactly. So, you started, if we have a look at the dates, by signing Boja Mayoral. Yep. First striker, striker in. Yeah, I do like a striker. Uh, that's a guy that you've used previously as yeah. well. Nine million pounds. Well, that was a good price as well. Yeah, he's three got and three, three and three for you so far. Nearly good average eight. rating. Average rating as well, yeah. And then you went for a nine million pound player. Another player that I'm quite fond of, I must admit. Umar yeah. Saleh. Yeah. That's a Straight good defender. Strength of a defender's up, yeah. There's a weird, like, French link in the Bundesliga. Yeah. Especially with certain clubs. Mm. Frankfurt being one of them. They always seem to sign French players. Gladbach's another one. Yeah. They seem to have a lot of French. And Leipzig. Mm. There's, like, three or four teams. I mean, to be fair, Bayern do it as well. They, they signed, yeah. you know, quite a lot of French players. There's a very weird crossover in there. I guess it's because they're connected to each other. I guess it's like English teams signing Welsh or Irish. Yeah, that's right, Pretty yeah. much. So, Umar Slay is a good player. £9 million. Then you've got a couple of long players in. Yeah. Yusuf Makoko. Another good one, I think. Good striker. Which is quite smart considering, is it Ilario is out for like three months yeah, at the start right, yeah. of the season? So I, I knew I needed another striker in really yeah. for the the, uh, the tactic that I'm going to play. So he's good, especially at 18 as well. He's a good striker, I think. He's cracking, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. And then finally, we've got a man that we are both aware of, Levi Colwell on yeah. loan as well. So another, another defender in. So strength for me, defence up and my, my straight force up. So yeah. quite pleased with this. And he's left footed too. Yeah. They do have a good left centre back though, I must admit. Uh, so tactically, you've gone with this. It is an asymmetric 4 triple 2 we've got an advanced playmaker and an advanced playmaker on attack yeah <laughs> is that intentional he's, he's just slotted into that gap there and just going for that through that little gap there That's is that intentional is it <laughs> right okay at least you're doing support roles yeah. this time round best 11 we've got Mario Gertz in there Mayoral and Makoko starts Mamouche on that left hand side Chaibi is in there Shkiri in the ball winning midfielder uh, Tuta at right centre back Levi Colwell at left centre back which is surprising because Pacho is very good yeah. at left centre back he is uh, the guy that I was like cool never have to replace him hopefully I don't have to sell him and uh, William Pacho went straight I think he's one lineup. of those players when you look at his star rating there he's one of the ones that you're quite good at doing this putting players in positions for them to get better over the next couple of seasons yeah where I don't do that do I I just think oh, you're not that good at the moment I'll get someone who's better than you yeah. at the moment so I'm that's... glad you said that because when we have a look at my starting 11 <laughs> I've nailed a player in for that exact reason yeah, and you're, it's not you're good William at that, Pacho I, and I don't like doing it so no but i see the potential yeah i'm i'm the i'm the future scout dad is the no well <laughs> unless you give me 20 goals right now you're gone yeah and if you're anywhere close to 30 also you're gone <laughs> right so let's have a look at your schedule so far right so went bad. through the dfb for car one nil yeah darmstadt five two europa conference league qualification went through on penalties yeah i was a bit disappointed with that yeah that's a close one yeah uh mine's two or draw both had a player sent off you had one for a lot longer than what they did yeah and then finally you beat cologne who are one of those teams very a class or really terrible when they're yeah. controlled by the AI. One nil, you defeated them there with your new striker. Not, not a bad goal. start, but I don't think I've really played anybody like that. No. Ball, so. so the conference league games that you've got 
Florin Tallinn, who is from Estonia. So that's a new one for me. I've never heard of them. Nice stadium, though. Yeah, it is, yeah. I must admit, from, you know, when you see, like, especially, like, the Eastern European sides where they don't have a lot of money, I look at their stadium and you think, oh, that's a little bit ropey. That looks like a nice stadium. They've even took the picture when they're watering the pitch yeah. on a sunny day. What I was just looking at, that was probably an old pipe just down the side of the stadium going and just pushing yeah. it onto the ground. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I quite like that stadium. Nice. And then we've got Lefke Sophia. Let's have a look at theirs. See, that's what I expect to see. Yeah. I don't like and that because of the running track. As an athletics group. Uh, yeah, place, yeah. Then we've got Fiorentina twice. Yeah. Obviously, it's a group stage. I'm, yeah. I'm being dumb there. It's a, it's a group stage. That's your group stage that you've got. I'm thinking that we're in the second season already. We're not. That is the group stage. You should go through that. Yeah, definitely. That's a good competition to get underway in the first season because, remember, that's worth quite a lot of points. Yeah. People always go, oh, there's a lot of points in that compared to winning the league, but it's a European competition. That's right, yeah. And we're yeah. keeping the same points all the way through. Okay, now we'll have a look at your season first before we have a look to see what I've done, just so we don't get too confused and complicated. We'll see how Dad does first, then mine. But remember, the extra three bonus points plays a part. So if you can keep a small tally in your head, oh, well, I think Luke's work, got more points. I think Dad's got more points. for me the last time, didn't it? It did indeed. So let's have a look. Dad's first season. First season for Dad, eighth place. Oh, that is bad. I was disappointed with that. I'm surprised you got the job still. Yeah. Eighth place finish. No European place for me next season. So No European football, 51 points. 52 behind, well, one point behind yeah. Hoffenheim there, which was a European spot. And you had a far greater goal difference as well than the top three teams above you. Cologne, as we mentioned, are very good in this sometimes. By a minute, won the league, Leipzig, Bochum. What? Where do they come from? They yeah. usually are like relegation fodder. Yeah. And they finish in third place. That is absolutely exceptional from then. Dortmund my, in fourth. My problem was drawing. I drew 12 games. 12 games in total. Wow. Uh, lost nine. Only lost once to Bayern Munich. Does that mean you beat them once? Must have, unless you drew against, oh, you drew against drew, them 1-1. Yeah. Not a bad season. But that's that's, that's a failure. Pick. Yeah. Not good. <clears throat> Harry Kane was top scorer. No surprises. Timo Werner, who is actually no longer there at the minute as, we're, as we are recording. Philip Max was the third highest assister though in the league that was the only player statistic you got however not only are Eintracht Frankfurt my favorite team but my favorite trophy in world football is the DFB Pokal did you pick it up the first season no we got runners up in the Europa Conference League when I got to the final I thought yes this will be winning something here but no I lost yeah, the final that's five points that you yeah. could have been winning there Fenerbahce on penalties, penalties. oh that's really unfortunate. Uh, your top scorer as well is a player that you've only got on loan. Yeah. So let's have a look at your group stage then. How did you get on in the group? You finished second place. Same points though. Exactly. Where really we thought we should finish yeah. really. So uh, I'm guessing it's down to games against each other. Yeah. They beat you and Drew. Whereas because yeah. you had a way high goal difference. Drew won one there to Fiorentina, but you stuffed everybody else when you actually played them. Uh, so then you went into the knockout playoff round and you defeated Stone Gratz. Round of 16, knocked out Fiorentina. Got me all back on them. Yeah. Quarter final, Aston Villa. That's a that big was, win. That was a big win. I thought I was going to get knocked out there. When I seen Villa there, I thought, oh no. Yeah, of all the but teams. I managed to beat them. So. Semi final, knocking out Marseille on penalties. Yeah. But losing on penalties in the final. Cracking uh, aggregate score there as well, 5 5. That's disappointing, Dad. That's unlucky. Second round against Cologne as well in the DFP Pacal, so not great there. Goals-wise, 24 for Mayoral, 23 for Makoko, which we've seen a lot of them was in Europe. Um, nowhere really else that's no. people's performing. That's, that's why I finished where I did in the league. Yeah, No I one agree. else backing them up, really. Uh, and your transfer budget for next season. Now, the Bundesliga does have quite a lot of money, and you don't see a lot of money troubles no. in um, the Bundesliga because of how fruitful it actually is. £13 million is not great, though. No. So... Okay. Well, it's a good... It's not a good start. It's, it's not a good start. I was disappointed with it. Points-wise... It would have been all right if I'd won that Yeah, it would have been a great off. season Yeah, that would have been a good season then. Yeah, because that's five points straight off the bat. But And that, and that probably would have put me in, in the Europa League if I'd won that. Yeah, it would have been. So I would yeah. have had European football. Yeah, but 51 points is probably... 
not going to be enough to add to your total total to make a big dent. No. And I should be beating eighth in the league yeah. to get that first point. So let's have a look to see what I've done in season number one. Now, you signed two strikers. I signed zero. <laughs> and I only signed one player, and that was Andre from Fluminense. 18 million pound. Center defensive midfield. Wow. Yeah. And that is because... You're not going to stroke this, are you? He is. Oh, How the hell? <laughs> giving it a go. <laughs> Come on. And as I mentioned, there's a player in the side that with a little bit of development can be incredible. That name is Hugo Larson. At the start of the game, he doesn't really have what it takes, but there's a lot of promise in there. He's only 19. He doesn't start in the starting 11, no matter how many positions you put in midfield, because there's just too many better players in Frankfurt's side. Uh, he's only just joined from Malmo. We need to give him game time. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So if I did do best 11 pick, it puts those players in there. Now, ideally, it would look either like this with uh hugo larson in like that or andre and shikiri would swap around and somebody else would go in that center attacking midfield or center midfield on attack role but for anybody who hasn't really used strikerless before the keys to it is to play really high up the pitch i've got the shadow striker i've got an inside forward i've got a runner from midfield but out of possession we are high defensive line high line of press we're stepping up more and we are quite attacking because else you're never gonna have any chances slightly higher tempo because if you go too high you're never going to keep the ball no. you're just going to lose it straight away because there's no focal point up top whipping in the crosses these are all the things that in strikerless you need to change and alter compared to what i would usually play so let's see if it paid off start the season it's been very good oh no no it's been very good dfb Pacal first round as expected win 3-0 in the bundesliga albeit some easier games 4-0 against darmstadt i'm thinking okay this is good vittoria from Portugal, 4-1 away from home, 4-1 at home, which means I also qualified for Europa Conference League and Mines 2-1 victory, but they scored in the 93rd minute, so I was comfortably ahead until that point. In Europe, my group stage is as follows. We've got Bodo Glimt, Aris, and Aberdeen. So I haven't got a Fiorentina in there, but I think the Should two qualify. teams that Bodo Glimt and Aberdeen are probably better than the two teams that you had, which wasn't Fiorentina. Yeah. But yeah, I should really be topping that group, if anything. Let's see. Can I top that group? Can I go on and better dad and lift a trophy in the first season? I've only got to finish in eighth place or higher to make sure he doesn't get that first point. And my strikerless tactic took me to third place. Joint on points with Leipzig. Yeah, well done. But a very low goal difference. When I seen your formation there, I thought you'd, you'd let yourself down here and I thought I, I, I thought I was going to beat you. So, well done. Strikerless prevails in this season anyway. So, yeah, goal difference-wise wasn't that much, but I didn't concede a lot. just didn't score as many, which kind of expect, really. Uh, I lost 10 games. But I only drew eight, uh, drew five compared to Leipzig's eight. So finished on the same points, but they managed to finish higher, obviously based on their goal difference and uh, and everything like that. Now I don't really have anybody in there other than Kevin Trapp, who had the second highest amount of clean sheets behind Manuel Neuer, and I didn't really expect to have that play in strikerless, especially because. Usually, to get strikers to be, like, really good, you need to have a good striker still. Yeah. And it sounds dumb, but if you've got a good striker and play them in a strikerless formation where they get chances, they tend to still score a lot of goals. Yeah. We don't really have anybody like that. And I, I decided to go for Andre as a midfielder instead. Maybe that was a mistake, but I win the point anyway for finishing higher. But competitions, they don't want a trophy. No, nowhere near. <laughs> nowhere near, in fact. Round of 16 by Osasuna. So you got to a final and I didn't. Uh, I was knocked down in the round of 16, which is very poor, really. I did top my group, though. So I didn't have to play in that knockout playoff round. Uh, I won four and drew two games there to Bodo Glimt and Aberdeen. It was not a good season for me in the Cups. I was also knocked out in the second round by Freiburg. Goals-wise, 15 from Mario Gertz. Uh, Mamouche got 12. But outside of that, wasn't a lot at all. My transfer budget for next season is 19 million. Ooh. It's not great. No. Will I stick to the strikerless formation going for? We'll have to find out. But points tally wise, I think you had 51 at the start yeah. there in your first season. I had 62. That's a, that's a big gap for me to pull back now already. Yeah, 10 points there straight away. And of <laughs> course, I get one full point for the sake of. Of finishing higher in the league the total points tally up to three bonus points at the end which as we've already seen from this format makes a big difference sometimes yep. so 
Let's have a look at Dad's season two. Dad, you sold nine million pounds worth of Yeah, players. I think I was just getting rid of what I what class is a dead wood in the background. Sort of yeah, it's not really significant. It's just no, a lot of... not really, yeah. Including Alario, who was obviously uh, injured last season yeah. and out at the start. But you've replaced quite well and spent 28 million pound. Yeah. Haven't blown it on like one player no. either. Spread it across. I was quite happy with this as well, so... Uh, we've got a winger who can also play centre attacking midfielder. Yeah. Only 19, so a lot of room to grow, I guess. Rocco Simic from Salzburg, good striker, Croatian, strong in pretty much everywhere, physical, really. I would say his physical is really good as well. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, hasn't got the best finishing, which does surprise me why you've signed him. Yeah. 12 finishing, that's usually a, a no-no He's probably going to be my um, reserve striker, I think. Okay, so. but he's only 20 again, yeah. so he got six goals in 17 last season, so he can't find the net. Uh, then we have Ivan Gasson from Nice. This is your type of striker. Yeah, definitely, yeah. He's pacey, he's powerful, he likes to beat the offside trap, lacks composure but when you get so many opportunities as we know they still score quite yeah. a lot of goals and he's only 23 and there's that french link again hasn't scored yet though no. got four and 17 last year hoffler 1.5 billion pound good squad player i know he's 34 but yeah he's just he just a bit of experience in the middle i think so for the money you spend is yeah it's a no-lose, really, isn't yeah. it? Alexander Newbell, which is a backup goalkeeper, I imagine. Yep, was, yeah. Instead of Kevin Trapp or with Kevin Trapp. Thomas Araujo. This one's a good centre-back option. Yeah, good centre-back. This one is. 22 we, we, we do use this player quite a few times as well, don't yeah, we? Yeah, from so. Benfica's famous academy. And then I made quite a lot of videos about him at the start of the year. Yeah. Samu Omarodion, one of my favourite Wonder Kids, new Wonder Kids of this season. Who I haven't seen for a while in a rebuild, so it's nice that you've brought him And he's him only 20 as well, so that's good, isn't it? Yeah, so he's got a loan deal there. Uh, have you got an optional future fee? You haven't. That's a shame because he can be really good in the yeah. future. But okay, that was the transfer window. Transfers on to tactics. You've changed the roles slightly, but still the same shape. Yeah. A sentiment field on defend. Why? Well, I, I didn't want to give away too much this, this, this season, so I'm defending a little bit more, trying okay. to not concede so many goals. I, I drew too many games last season, so yeah. I'd be a little bit more conservative, I think. Okay, so if I do best 11 pick, this is what it looks like. Yeah. I don't know. I think I know exactly what you've done. Yeah, what a surprise. It's because it's, it's his favourite role. <laughs> you are a sucker for the player roles rather than the tactics. But it, it might have also been if I played a different role, more of a centre midfield attacking role, he might have gone out of it and someone else might have took yeah, over from it. Yeah. So, and I wanted him in there. Okay, but yeah, you're a sucker for changing the tactic <laughs> because of the player roles. <laughs> That the player does better. Okay, there we go. So that's your lineup. That's what it looks like as a best 11. Let's see your schedule. No European football qualification, but you did get through the first round of the cup. Yeah. 3 2 against Sandhausen. You beat Gladbach 1 0 away from home. That's a good result. Unfortunately, then you come up against Harry Kane's Bayern Munich and he scored against you yeah. as well. Bet that really hurt. Yeah, it did. Uh, and then Cologne beat you 2 or 3 2, yeah. unfortunately. Uh, it's one of those things, isn't it? We always say it, don't we, when we're watching our, our results go through? You can't afford to lose two or three games in a row. Yeah. If you lose one, you need to get back into it again and then you're going on a winning run then. Get back and on the horse. And unfortunately, I went on a, a, a couple of games uh, without winning there, so. I'm a bit worried now. We well, got newly promoted Schalke next. Yeah, so I'm hoping I can get back into it then. Yeah. So and shout out to Schalke, who might be in trouble this season. Let's hope they don't fold completely because no, that's I think right, yeah. they lose their license or something yeah, so if they get relegated. As long as they, as long as they stay up, they should be all right. So, yeah, so fingers crossed for them. them. Right. So uh, let's have a look then at your second season before we see how I do with my strikerless tactic, whether I've kept it or not. Let's have a look. <laughs> Second season, Dad, you're into the European spot. Yeah, a bit better. Still low on points, though, isn't it? That's yeah. Lost. I'm a bit worried about that again. Especially, I mean, Bayern only 87 points. They lost three and drew three, so... But remember, it is only 34 games. Yeah. So, 87 points is quite good for yeah, 30, true, yeah. 34 games. Uh, you got as high as what looks like fifth, which is pretty much your highest that you've got I this stopped, season. I stopped drawing, but I lost more this time. Yeah. <laughs> so, across the season, it, it was quite... Roughly, you were between fifth and eighth yeah. all the way through. Fifty-six points to add to your top tally onto from next season. Hoffenheim beat you in the last game of the season there, where you lost yeah, to Hoffenheim. <laughs> so they overtook you there from yeah. that. Schalke, as we uh, said, came up. They gone straight back down there, unfortunately for them. Profile: You had Amaroni on, yeah, seventeen goals, nice. So he did score. However, he's just a lone player. Yeah, I know. don't fall in love with the lone players, <laughs> yeah. as we all know. What about? The DFB Pacal, did you get to the final? Maybe you won it. 
No, third round by Leipzig. So it's well, you, you, you got, you're you open to try and avoid the top two or three teams, in you? But yeah. I caught up against them and I, got, I lost, so... Can I beat sixth place? You've got 56 points to add to your total tally there. 18 goals for Omarodion. I'm disappointed there yeah. with Cassons. 100%. With 13. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe after he, that he, he needed to play more. Yeah. Because he's got 13 and 14 starts and 18 off the bench. So if he plays more, he probably scores yeah. your top scorer there, which is a shame. Maybe that's something you need to look at in the next season. But there we go. Transfer budget for next season, 34 million. So it's gone up a little bit. Oh, please, with that good waste. Not a lot. But you have got European football to think about. Yeah. Europa League football, I believe. You have got Europa League football. Probably have to qualify for it. So can you do that? Well, before... Let's see how I did in my second season. Now, like you, Dad, there was a lot of dead wood that I decided to get rid of. However, I also got rid of World Cup winning goal scorer, Mario Gertz to Freiburg for £12 million. I just, I know he was my top scorer as well. He's 32. I'm never going to get money like that for no. him again. And I don't think in the strikerless formation that I'm going to stick with Ooh. for now, he gives me enough goals or contributions so he's out the door for 12 million pound and i think i've replaced quite well starting off how funny <laughs> we signed the same player <laughs> now hilariously we don't know how each other's done no nope. until we are literally sat here recording right now so it's a bit of a coincidence when you sign the same player it's even more of a coincidence when you sign a player from the Hungarian team of Ferran Varos in the same transfer window for roughly the same amount. <laughs> so I'm guessing there's some kind of Hungarian scout or where we set it up and our scouts have gone to Hungary and just found the same player and we've both gone. He looks quite good. Yeah. That's hilarious. So there we go. But Andre Sheldrup will probably be playing on that left-hand side more than him. Because he is way better. Yeah. Uh, he has also cost me £17 million. So Mario Gertz plus another £5 million. But I think that's going to be worth it. One assist so far and one appearance with an 8.3 average rating. So it's a lot of money. But I think he could be worth it in the long run. Kang In Lee from PSG. £9.5 million. He was transfer listed. So I think that's a good deal. Great with both feet. Plays across the front three. Causes a lot of danger. And I'm trying to find those attacking midfielders who can finish as well for the strikerless tactic. Alejandro Francis, 8.5 million pound from Real Zaragoza, can also play center back or right back, which is the reason why I really wanted to go for him, because right now there's a couple of positions where I don't have the money to improve the first team. No. But I need players who can do both and be the same quality if mm. one of my players misses out. Uh, and Francis is one of them. He can pretty much play in every single game then as long as he isn't injured uh, Wendell from Zenit the reason why I got him is he's quite good going forward a lot of 14s everywhere as a centre midfielder he has that ability to bomb forward uh, and create some danger for me and then finally like you I bought myself a backup goalkeeper a German one Sven Ulreich for a free transfer so he'll probably have one season here before he retires I guess but again that was also from Bayern Munich yeah. we both signed Bayern Munich's uh, backup goalkeepers there from last season so I've changed it slightly in regards to the player roles Larson, I still need to keep in that role there um, and if I went pick without restriction he comes out of it which is the reason why I had to put him in there and really I'd like it to be like that with Larson because he's getting better he just needs a couple of more seasons uh, where he gets first team football he's good, eh? yeah before he uh, he nails down his position in that so outside of that schedule wise been okay yeah and I've even drawn against the two big boys in the league yeah. Leipzig and Bayern Munich Ooh, that's worrying hey? and I almost beat them too yeah 91st minute, uh, unfortunately. And Hugo Larsson got the goal there as well. Timo Werner scored in the 67th minute after they gifted me an own goal. Beat Hamburg 4-0 though, and I'm through to the second round of the cup after beating uh, Stad Tellendorf. But they also have Eintracht in their name. Yeah. So Now I'm in the Champions League. Let's have a look at my fixtures for the Champions League football. Copenhagen, Barcelona, Atletico Madrid, Young Boys, Sevilla. Man City. But then Marseille and Rapid Vienna are two winnable got, games at the end there. You've got an outside chance. Yeah. An outside chance. But the Barcelona, Athletic Madrid, Seville and Man City. Oh, no I mean, I always think to qualify in the new league phase, you need to win four games. Yeah. There's four winnable games Yeah, there. definitely, yeah. Copenhagen, Young Boys, Marseille, Rapid Vienna. Yeah. I one one slip through. up and you're out. Yeah. I think I'm going through. But let's have a look then. Second season. Let's simulate it. I've got, what, sixth place to beat? Yeah. Sixth place to see if I can do it. 
And I have in third position with 60 points. So actually, in the grand scheme of things, only four points more than you. Yeah. It was a lot tighter. But have a look at the teams below me. Three of them, all on 57. And Cologne, second place. Yeah. They slipped through again. Yeah. So they are very good in that. Yeah. Again, I think goals wise, I didn't score enough. I only got 45. But I only conceded 22, which was the least in the league. I joint with by Leverkusen, who do they still have? Shab they do still have Xabi Alonso. But I lost less games than them. Yeah. I just drew, just drew. 15. <laughs> I thought I was bad when I drew 12. Well, I drew the last three. Yeah. If you look at that, Cologne, Mines, and Wolfsburg, I drew the last three games, so that's unfortunate. But I only lost four games all the way from home. My home ground was a bit of a fortress, I must admit, uh, because a lot of the away games I drew too. I'm really happy with that, if I'm honest. Yeah. A big surprise, I think, was Gladbach getting relegated mm. on 34 points, which is quite a high tally with 34 games to get relegated with. But I think that just shows how tight the whole league is outside of Bayern Munich. And I think the Bundesliga is always like that. Yeah. You think where Bochum finished in one of the one of our seasons, the first year. Second or third? Second, yeah. Yeah, or third. yeah it might have been third, actually. Uh, but 14th down here. Yeah. So it's, it is really close. Didn't have a goal scorer really or assist there, yeah. but Kevin Trapp got the second highest amount of clean sheets with 19 outside of Horajaki and Neuer's 20. So, yeah, as you can imagine, conceding the least amount of goals, I was probably going to be around there. Hmm. But the Champions League or the DFB Pokal have I picked one up? Yes! My favourite trophy, the DFB Pokal. That's it. I Winner. Mean, that's it, I think. I can't win the Cups. <laughs> For some reason. Three points ahead already because of that. So, 3-1 finish against Gladbach. Relegated Gladbach in the final. Hugo Ooh. Larson kicked me off as well. Look. Who knocked the big boys out then? Yeah, let's find out, shall we? So, third round, I knocked out Wolfsburg after extra time. Uh, quarter final was Freiburg. And at this point, look at None the teams around. There. None of them are there. They already got knocked out. None of the good teams are there. So if you go back around, Bayern Munich were eliminated by Cologne. Leverkusen were knocked out by Hansa Rostock. Dortmund were knocked out by Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg. And Leipzig were knocked out by Bayern Munich. Ooh. So I got away with it there, really. So you had, really, you had a lucky, lucky year, really. Not with really. all the big teams being knocked out. Before you got to the Cologne. Yeah, but you, before the quarterfinals and they're all out. Every one of them. Yeah. It's not very often that happens, is it? You, know, you can only beat who's in front of you. So I beat Cologne 3-1. And then in the final, Gladbach 3-1 as well. So I had a great season. However, in the Champions League... Not so great. I only won one out of the, mm. out of the eight. There we go. Before we said that, that you slipped up, you're, you're going to lose. Drew nil nil to Rapid Vienna and drew one one to Copenhagen, which is really poor. Uh, never got battered apart from Marseille. <laughs> 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 only lost 1-0 to Man City and only 2-0 at the new Camp. So I'm, I'm happy with that. But considering Man City actually went on one or eight, yeah. I'm probably the only one that they uh, didn't stuff. Not a bad season, though. DFB Pacal, and I finished higher. So that's an extra four points in total. Sheldra up with 12 goals, though. Hugo Larson with 10. It's not a lot. Not a lot. It's not time. a lot, but look where you're finishing and you won the cup. So yeah. you're doing the business to win, you really. Transfer budget-wise for next season, £44 million. Pound, but I've just come off the back of a champion. Champions League finish. Yeah. So again, Champions League football next season will help that and continue the good finances. But a DFB Pokal to add to the trophy cabinet, I am absolutely buzzing with. It's one of the main reasons why I support Frankfurt. It's because the year that they won the DFB Pokal is when I got into the Bundesliga and watched their run to win that trophy. Yeah. And it was amazing. They had an unbelievable team uh, back then. Cracking stuff in this second season. Dad's got it all to catch up. Definitely. Let's have a look at the points. After two seasons, the points are as follows. Omega Luke with five. Omega Dad with zero. Season number three then, Dad. Yeah. You sold £10 million worth of players. I think I was the same as the last season. I'm just getting rid of the, like, the dead wood in there. And I think you look at when I'm the signings that I've made, I think you, you'll see that I might not be buying like first team players, but I'm just improving the squad okay. more than anything and yeah. you know, making it stronger. So let's let's start then with the most expensive one, Ko Itakaru, who is a centre-back. You can also play midfield. Japanese yeah. from Gladbach. Brings ball out defence. Very good on the ball. Got some great mental attributes as well. Yeah. Solid defender, really. Yeah. Kidi Barr, who I've never heard of, £7 million. It's quite a lot of money for... Yeah. The quality of player that he brings, but he is natural in two positions there. Then we have Lucas. Hey, <laughs> six million. Good defender as well. He is a good defender. Yeah. Great determination. Yeah. Concentration and positioning is up there as well. Fantastic jump in reach. All right. He's very good. Got good player traits as well. Of 
marks opponents tightly. Great defender. Yeah. So you brought in two really good defenders there. Yeah. Marcos Portillo, which was 7.25 million pound. That's a lot better. Midfielder. Yeah. Creative. Striking the midfield Italy. up again. So, yeah. like I said, improving the squad more than anything. Then we've got Popovic from Partizan. Take it as like a... Because you got him on the development list to loan him out, so yeah. take it's like a. Uh, I got backup. a couple. I think it was, I think I've got bought two 19-year-old strikers who, who could be good in the future. Yeah. So and they didn't cost me a lot of money to get him in, neither. So. No, he was just 4.5. Yeah. Uh, this is basically a free transfer. I think you have to pay a slight amount because of his contract. But 26 years of age, really good yeah, CDM to pick good. up for free. Yeah, definitely. Um, where there's like not 15s, a lot of them are 14s yeah. in the positions oh, where yeah, you want them. Yeah. So that's a really good player. And he's left footed again, which in midfield, they're actually value, quite valuable to have. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Leon Bailey yeah. on a free. I thought that was a good sign for a freebie. Yeah. He was amazing in the Bundesliga yeah. back in the day when he played for Bayer Leverkusen. So he was really good there. Uh, so get him on a free from Aston Villa. He don't look like they used him much in the last couple of seasons. That's a good little bargain, that one. Yannick Eduardo, that's the other 19 year striker, I take it you're yeah. on about. He was I mean, on the finishing, long list. finishing them 15 already. Yeah. At 19. That's good. Then we've got Nuno Tavares, free transfer. That's a great left back to yeah. pick up on a free again. He's in the prime of his career. Unbelievable physicals. Very good. And he gets four whenever possible. Mm. So didn't really play much at Arsenal for him when he made his move from Benfica. Then we've got a few low knees. So we've got Valentin Gomez from Arsenal. Again, another centre back. So you've got three centre backs coming in. But I'm, I'm just making sure they're strong. Yeah. And this guy's coming in just in case I get any injuries. So pleased with that. Armando Brogia on yeah. loan. Good pace. Yeah. Good finishing, dribbling, and then Cole Palmer on loan, who's I think really underrated on this. I think in the winter update he's going to get a huge oh, 100%. boost. He's playing so well at the moment, Chelsea, yeah. and he, so he's had a yeah. great season. So I think he, they've really underestimated how good Cole Palmer is on Football Manager. That's one of the ones that they got wrong, I think, in this occasion. I don't think they were too sure how it was going to happen for him at Chelsea, did they? Because yeah. he went there. Everybody was surprised that Man City let him go. Yeah. And then with the with the signings that Chelsea made, you just couldn't find a place that he was going to fit in anywhere, didn't you? But no. He's, he stepped up and he's and he's he's probably one of the first players on their on their team sheet. I agree. Tactically, then, Dad, let's have a look. So you've gone for a winger on the right hand side this time round. You've got box to box in the middle there with a ball winner. A lot of support roles. Yeah. <laughs> Tavares goes straight at left back. We've yeah, got Dino MBB who is in the starting team. But he's just really good at everything. Also yeah. plays right back. So he actually goes in that box-to-box -box midfielder role in there. Considering how many midfielders you you brought in. Yeah. I'm quite surprised But that. But that goes to show how strong my midfield's going to be then. I'm liking yeah. a couple of reserve players coming in that are good as well. Yeah, you got Broya and Mayoral up front. Which was no surprise that was going to happen, was it? Yeah. The other guys were 19s, weren't they? So. That's right, yeah. yeah. Uh, Bailey straight in on that right-hand side. Cole Palmer in behind let's have a look at the schedule now 10 nil in the first game yeah <laughs> that's really big, that it one. looks like you're basically <laughs> playing on somebody's astral <laughs> yeah like, that is that's not a stadium but there we go so you beat them 10 nil and, and i lost against lost that team that's, they're doing so well in my, they're in my read, though, in your world doing, yeah. yeah freiburg 3-2 that's a good win but then losing 3-0 to hamburg yeah. are the alarm bells starting to ring oh, no. I know. I was a bit worried, and I think I, I think I, I might have mucked about a little bit with me, with my um, tactics as well, and trying to find the right one. And um, the one that you see at the end, I think, is the one that I've, I've finally you gone with. with. Yeah. You're in Europa League. Let's have a look at your fixtures for this season. We've got Lazio. That's a hard start to begin with. Yeah. At home, Dinamo Kiev. Uh, CSK Sofia, which is, again, look at that stadium. Awful, really, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Lorion and Benfica, which has got a beautiful stadium. Oh, you can't Benfica play football, you shouldn't be playing football at all. Uh, Shakhtar, again, a lovely yeah. stadium. Uh, Ammonia, playing at home. And then finally, at home to Istanbul, uh, which is fortunate because you don't want to go there away from home too no. often. No. Uh, so, do you think you qualify from Europa League? I'll be disappointed if I don't. Yeah, I think you should too. Yeah. Uh, you're a little bit behind me right now, but yeah. let's see if you can claw that back with a really strong third season. And you did in a way. Yeah. Fourth place. Pulled it up to fourth. 62 points as well. Yeah. So at, at certain points as well, you're, yeah, you're creeping yeah. around third. So you and Dortmund were very close together. Leipzig seems to be in a league of their own. Yeah. Bayern Munich, nine Another league of their own. Bloody yeah. hell. Yeah. You lost 10 games in total, Dad. Uh, less than Dortmund, but you drew two more than them, unfortunately, yeah. which sees you go 62 points to one behind them. Just in front of Gladbach and Augsburg. Both have 61. So got into the Champions just, League for the first just time. Just stripped into there, yeah. Yeah, which is good. No goal scorers. Actually, nobody on there. 
All right, fair enough. What about the cup competitions? Maybe you lifted a Europa League trophy or a DFB Pacao. Oh! Almost got the double. Yeah. Wow. But congratulations. You yeah. won my favourite trophy. Yeah, pleased with that. I'll You've be matched back a me bit. there so far with a DFB Pacao win. I could have done with that cut of other cup one as well. That I probably yeah. right back into it. Oh, yeah, that five points would yeah. have been a big big win so there. That's too far as I got to the in the yeah in Europe in so Europe, far. Lost both of them. Yeah. Now you just need to get to the Champs League final. <laughs> uh you defeated that's by that's Munich what I was in more the of DFB for beating them in the cup final so yeah. Two penalties though. <laughs> uh, you take it then you yeah take it. I bet they didn't have VAR <laughs> either. I bet it was lucky. But let's have a look then at your Europa League run. So you lost oh. That's what made it even worse. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> oh, no, I couldn't How believe it. How did you it. lose to them? Yeah, I oh, know. <laughs> and Postacoglu is still the manager. That is hilarious. That's Absolutely a, that's gutted so I was when that one happened. Brilliant. Couldn't it's it, just could the you? stories that get woven <laughs> in these, isn't it? It's it? just perfect. Uh, you lost one game. That was to CSK. <laughs> it's that stadium, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> there was that stadium, but you won seven in total. Yeah, so pleased with that. Eight nils there. That was a, yeah, that was six, a big one. one. Eight Mamouche actually had the most goals in the in the whole competition. From the league phase, then you went into the round of 16 where you beat Lorient. I think you've played them in the group stage as well. Quarter final, you knocked out Sporting. That's a That's big a win. Game. Yeah. That is a big win. Look at the teams that are around oh, at no, this oh, point. Well. I was staying Napoli. away from them as well. Yeah, Sevilla's still around. So in the semi final, you knocked out Sevilla seven. 7-6. What a second yeah, leg. Definitely, yeah. 6-3, second leg win. Mental, that is, after the 3-1 first leg defeat. Fair play to you then. Uh, Tottenham beat Valencia in their semi-final. That's a great season. That's a cracking that's season. Put me back into it. Yeah, because not only did you... don't win the cup this season, oh, I'm all right. That's the thing, isn't yeah. it? Because uh, not only did you improve your league form and points tally in total, but you got to two finals. Yeah. Uh, you're just unfortunate in one. What um, I was pleased with that as well, I've got two, two strikers in the 20s, yeah. and they're my strikers. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, he's more of a winger, I think. Oh, no, he is a striker. He does play up front. I think I did. Well, he, no, I don't he play might have played quite a lot. We yeah. can have a look. We can have a look. See his form. Yeah, he's, he played a bit of both. Look. Yeah. So he played everywhere. Deep line forward, winger. He was your utility man. Yeah. Uh, so he was crucial for you that season, the Egyptian, Marmouche. And then Maya Rao got 23 up front there with nine assists. So really good from him. Broja still on loan, got 19. Yeah. It's not good. bad at all. Great first season for Leon Bailey. Definitely. With yeah. 12 and 17 yeah. assists. And his value is already up to 36 million pounds. But how much money have you got now? 32 million. Happy with that? Yeah. Yeah, that's where I thought it would be. Okay. So let's remind ourselves 62 points. I've got to beat fourth place in the league. Unfortunately, so close to five points there. But you also get three points for the domestic cup win to add to your points tally. So let's see how I did in season three. Now, the player that you just had as your top scorer, I sold for £33 million pound this summer. <laughs> so there we go. And I've also made £11 million pound out of Nauf as well, with a few pennies coming out from other players too. And that allowed me to spend £84 million pound in total, because that gave me an extra 48 on top yeah. of my transfer budget. But I started off with a free signing in Ratnik. It's quite a good centre-back, to be fair. Only 21, Savinian. Uh, has a good potential, tries to play a way out of trouble, good strength right now. I think it's a good sign, especially yeah. for a backup centre-back in the Bundesliga. And I started spending a little bit of money in Petrovic from Chelsea as a backup goalkeeper. Decent keeper, to be fair, especially if I lose Kevin Trapp for whatever reason. He can definitely fill in. I was going to say in the boots, but I guess the gloves. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, and then the money, this is where the money was spent. Four players for roughly £80 million and they were all around about that £20 million mark. Batarina from Dinamo Zagreb to begin with. Really good attacking midfielder but can also play naturally from that left-hand side. So kind of like what Marmouche was to you, yeah. Batarina is to me. He gives me so many different options but that arise late in opponent's area is something for strikerless is really good. Then we have Joshua Xerxes, 20 million pound. It's the first striker that I've signed. Yeah. But if you look at the type of striker he is, he's only got 13 finishing and only 13 for composure and off the ball. But he does have good dribbling, first touch, passing of 16, vision of 16, and he likes to play with his back to goal. Which tells me he's not an out and out your typical type of striker. No. He's more of a give the ball to him and he's going to create. He's going to be the assister. The deep line forward as it would be here, but he's good with both feet. Tries killer balls as well. So maybe I'm not playing him as a striker as such. We'll have a look in a minute. Uh, Sergio Carrera is a right back that I got from Celta Vigo. Very good right back as well. Gets forward whenever possible. Uh, can cross a ball, can tackle. And then finally, Jurgen Ecklenkamp from Antwerp. 
20 million pounds from a player from Belgium is quite a lot of money. Yeah. However, the reason why I signed him, he has 15 for composure and 15 for finishing as a centre midfielder and I'm training to get forward whenever possible. So you know exactly what my game plan is right here. Yeah. That relates to the tactics because he is going in, set there, in a centre midfield on attack and Xerxes is going there every single game as an attacking midfield on attack because of course he is naturally a striker. So if I press best 11 it changes and i don't want that to happen so first time i haven't put larson in the team but i think he's good enough now to give as much game time as what uh, maybe he needs and is possible alongside andre who's played there for a couple, last couple of seasons too is my first signing that i made in this rebuild he's very good as well now too my schedule let's have a look at it with this new style of tactic well i lost on penalties in the super cup which is not, nothing that's too right. bad, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, against Bayern Munich, holding them to a, a nil-nil is, yeah. is not bad at all. Uh, and you saw a scoring goals Neumunster, 5-1. Stuttgart, 4-1. Nuremberg, 2-0. Uh, and I conceded two goals there, and one was a 93rd minute, which is really annoying. Yeah, that is really just try to send off as one as well. Really. Yeah, in the 81st as well, so they <clears throat> capitalised on it. Yeah. Uh, so Champions League fixtures for this season. Benfica, I've got Tottenham, the Europa League winners. Mm. Thank you very much, Spurs. Shakhtar, Inter Milan, Rennes, Hapoel, Beersheba, Ajax and Villarreal. I do find it funny how I'm playing Tottenham in my universe the year after they beat you in the Europa <laughs> League. Because in my head, it was like, of course they're in the Champions League. They just won the Europa League. Yeah. But it wasn't. Because they didn't win the Europa League no, in my year. No, they didn't, no. They, they, well, they might have done. But, you know, they, they, they're they just in the Champions League for some reason. Yeah. And I'm just still there. So, uh, it is funny how all those things work out. But that's a difficult group. Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, the first two to begin with is hard. And then I've got Inter Milan. And then finishing off with Ajax and Villarreal. I don't think I'm going to find from that. Don't you? No. I think maybe focus on the league. See if we can split second and, and Bayern. Uh, and see if we can just get closer to Bayern. Yeah. Maybe retain the cup. That's my aim for this season. I hope he's in none of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Season number three. How do nice. I get on? Season three. And I've actually dropped down to fourth. Same as me. Yeah. So you had 62 points. I had 61. So I gained a point on you, but not enough. A lot of people were saying when we've got the same points, give the point to whoever got the most points on the day. Usually I don't like changing the points. I think we should add that in. I think that's a good addition. Fair enough. I'll take that. It's a point extra for an extra point for you. <laughs> only by one point as well. You only beat me by. So yeah. I think that's a fair addition. And that's where the comment section were actually talking sense for once. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. I'm only joking. 99% <laughs> yeah. of you are class and sound and write lovely comments. It's just that 1% of you are absolute pillow snoggers <laughs> and absolute idiots and buffoons. But we love you all the same. Thank yeah, you very do, much yeah. for watching. Make sure you are any, subscribing. Any comment coming through, we love it. Come exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, make sure you're subscribing. We are very close now to 120,000. We might yeah. have already passed it by the time this comes out. So if that is the case, see if we can get to 125. Really do appreciate yeah. it. Uh, okay, so let's dive a little bit more into into this season that I had here in the Bundesliga, which wasn't as good as the last couple of seasons I've had, 61 points. I mean, last season I had 60 points and the season before I had 62. So I'm very consistent. Yeah. It's just in terms of the league position, uh, not consistent. Profile of the league, I didn't have anybody in the scorers or average ratings. I had Sheldrop who got the second highest amount of player of the matches but that's not too great past positions the season across that i, I dropped down quite a lot in fact i was in danger pulled it back, yeah yeah i was in seventh at one point and managed to pull it back with a big couple of wins against augsburg and wolfsburg uh and then carried on towards the end of the season but i mean Bayern ran away with it although they started really badly uh they ran away with it uh and just carried on their dominance in both of our universes unfortunately can't touch him. No. But I am in the Champions League. I am also in the DFB Pokal. But how far did I get? Yes. Not very far at all. Round of 16 by Tottenham. <laughs> oh, well, that's not a Good old Ange. He's coming back. <laughs> Second round by Bayer Leverkusen was not great either. On penalties as well. Uh, Bayern Munich beat Bochum in the final. Who keep showing up. They do. It's weird, isn't it? Both of our universes, which is strange. They're not even in the... Oh, they've just been relegated. So they got relegated in yours, but they didn't in mine, I don't No, no. So the round of 16, I got eliminated 3-2 there, which is quite annoying. Uh, the league phase. Whoa. Done really well there, didn't you? Yeah. I didn't expect that. To finish in the top eight. Won five games. You beat Spurs in beat that Spurs 2-0. <laughs> they come back in all Yeah, that's not 
not annoying, is it? Um, <laughs> so drew two there against Benfica and Shakhtar, and I lost one to Villarreal, which was the final game. Was which the last meant game. So I was already, already qualified. Yeah, he was already there. So I didn't really need to worry about it. So fair play to Eintracht Frankfurt until we got to the round of bloody 16. I've also found that that's quite funny because I still won on penalties against, against Liverpool, Liverpool in the yeah. final. Did they play Spurs at any point? They beat Real Madrid? Quarter final. Arsenal beat Liverpool. Milan. No, Liverpool beat Spurs. That's funny. But we could have had a, an all uh, semi final from England again. Yeah. But Man City and Man United, two Manchester clubs, let them down. And new, Real Madrid won 5 0 in the second leg. <laughs> After a 4 1 home, well, the 4 1 first leg win from Man City. Shell drop 21 goals, 10 assists, 15 from Joshua Xerxes, which isn't bad considering he is more of a provider. Yeah. Uh, and 12 from Chaibi, which. I didn't realise was playing that many games, if I'm honest. And he is transfer listed from the end of last season. So, Eckler Camp didn't do as well as what I hoped. I thought he'd be a lot better. But it's good to see Hugo Larson is still playing. And he's still getting good. My transfer budget for the following season, 92 million. Christ, how the hell did you get that? Champions League, three years in a row. I'm in trouble now. Well, you got Champions League football now. Yeah, but I ain't got the budget to go with it. Well, I, need, wow. I need I need, I need, to let you a couple of seasons in it. Uh, but of course, you've won the DFB Pokal. You've got a point for also finishing on higher points, although it's the same points or well, the same position. You've got a little bit of a comeback coming yeah. on there. Let's have a look at the points tally. Dad has amounted a comeback as the points now look like this. Omega Luke with five. Omega Dad with four. Wow, big summer window for Dad. Yeah. £69 million on the outs including last season as well, Hugo Larson. Oh, I'm not used to him and so he's, yeah. to me he's like dead wood, but to you he's, he's a lot. He's worth a lot more, isn't he? Yeah. And it, it, does, it does go to show when you do use these players how much better they are. He is much better on your... Because um, he's giving the game time. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. But at what cost sometimes? That's the trouble. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it could have cost you, but I mean, I think you've got away with it. Yeah. And he has got better, so you're coming into the last two seasons now with a good player. Yes. I've got rid of mine for 1.2. Yeah. So. But it's season four... And everybody knows that's when dad likes to go to Saudi Arabia on the phone. <laughs> Frank Cassie didn't pick up, unfortunately. But I'll tell you who did, and that's Octavio. He's cracking oh, player, isn't he? Good. This is a good buy for me, I think. Yeah. Really. This is going to make my midfield so much stronger, I think. So he comes in the club. Then you've got Alan St. Maximin. Yeah. Dangerous. I was quite surprised when Newcastle let him go. But yeah, I was, yeah. There we go. Pablo Maffeo from Mallorca. Cracking right back as well. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Alexander Mitrovic. You're a big fan of him. Yep, I am. Yeah, I think I just I just think he's such a surprise that Fulham let him go because he's so strong. Yeah, Lucas Perry, that's one another callback. One of my favourite goalkeepers this boy is. Yeah, it? And like, when I first found him, I sold him for hundred million. Didn't I? Yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah, So yeah, always had an affection with him since yeah, then. Did, yeah, did. Yeah, Esri Konza for twenty two million pound from Aston Villa. Good centre back yeah. again. Don't think he needed centre backs, but. I'm just strengthening everything up, really. Yeah. Then we got Florentino Luis, which is what you spent the bulk of your money on, 38 yeah. million. I do like this player as well. He's yeah. really strong in the midfield there. Yeah. Quite a like Portuguese link with this transfer window because yeah. there's a couple of players from uh, Portugal, like Benfica, but Otavio was there for a while as yeah. well. Uh, and then Thiago Almeida. Now, a lot of uh, football manager diehards are going to love you for this signing. Yeah. He's one of the ultimate favourite wonder kids who's yet to live up to it in real life. And then finally, Myron Van Brederode on loan. Somebody's been watching my TikTok. I ain't got TikTok, so I can't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't watch my TikTok, go to the TikTok. I talk <laughs> about players like this on there. Just search for Omega Luke on TikTok. You'll find me. But there we go. So he plays across the front three naturally and in behind the striker, should you need him to. Uh, good it's a good seven, signing. Yeah. Let's have a look at your tactic then. Because you've gone to a 4 triple 2 which again is slightly different to what you had last season. Well, when I brought the players that I've brought in, you've got to sort of like find places for them, really. And yeah. Well, I think it's quite a strong side, to be honest with you. Yeah, especially that midfield yeah it's right Luis is a really good like ball winning yeah. defensive midfielder uh, will just sit in front of your defence which is great Octavio in that advanced playmaker role well, yeah. your favourite role advanced playmaker yeah. think about getting t-shirts <laughs> we got Pacho finally in the club yeah finally being used it looks like he had a good season last year I think because he uh, I mean it does look like you tried to flog him by the looks of it you set an asking price of 35 million but he has been playing a couple of seasons yeah. so I've seen him go for stupid money so there was no way I was ever selling him no I'm like Woof. let's have a look then at your schedule started off okay although a big loss there in the Super Cup to Bayern Munich is not going to do very good for morale no through the next round of the Cup 5-0 as expected uh, Dusseldorf 1-1 
That's the point. Bad of result. That. 93rd minute. 93rd goal minute goal well. equaliser. 2 1 against Stuttgart, though. Back on track. Thanks for that one. One of your old favourites, Andre Frankel, scored against you yeah. there. And then a 4 0 win against Werder Bremen, which is nice. I'm happy with that. I'm happy. I think it's a goodish start. Yeah. So I'm happy. Yeah, okay. I've got, I've got a really good, strong side, so I think I'm hoping to be better than I was last season. I mean, the points is really close again now, yeah. thanks to that cup win that you yeah, had. Yeah, I definitely needed that tonight. So, the Champions League fixtures, you got Marseille, Barcelona, and Napoli as your first three there. Copenhagen <laughs> and both Madrids. Ending with Celtic and Shakhtar. Yeah, I'm, I'm struggle. I think you'll struggle too. Definitely. Because all of the really hard games, well, Real Madrid at home, that's... You can kind of be like, it's Real Madrid. Yeah. But then you got to go to Barcelona, which yeah. is hard. And then go to Napoli. So that's like almost a winnable one. But it's like, oh, you actually got to go to the I mean, even, even Celtic in the Champions League at home are an hard team to beat Very. at home. Yeah. They get that crowd with them. Yeah. Definitely hard to beat. Ukrainians, they're loud too. Yeah. So that's going to be a difficult one for you. Let's have a look then. Fourth season. Can you get yourself ahead? Let's have a see how you get on. Fourth season and you're in second place, Dad. I'm a mile away from them, but I've improved, so I'm happy with Yeah, that. 69 points. Yeah. It was a big improvement from your last season, which was 62. So extra eight points there. Could have been more as well. You drew a few games at the end of the season there. Yeah. Uh, scoring the most goals in the league, but conceding almost double the amount of Bayern Munich <laughs> who finished in first place, only losing four games, four away games too. You lost against them, as we knew at the start of the season, but it looks like you drew in the home leg. Yeah. Which isn't bad, really. No. But you got yourself ahead of Borussia Dortmund. You've split the top two. You just need to see if you can do that in the final season. And Mitrovic has come in and give you a top scorer. Good in, eh? And the highest average rating, too. And that the was most player matches. That's a good signing, then, wasn't it? It was a very good signing. Mafia also came in. He got the most yellow cards. Expected. That's what I, I want my right back to do. Yep. Yeah. If you've gone past you, you bring him down. Bring him down. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Competitions. Did you win back to back DF Bacal trophies? Almost. <laughs> I've just seen him knock you out oh, in no. round of 16. <laughs> They're going to the villains of this oh. video already, aren't they? Tottenham Hotspur in the round of 16. 5-2. Yeah. Those bloody idiots. 5-3 <laughs> against Copenhagen in the knockout playoff round, which means you qualified in the top 24. And you finished in 13th. It's not yeah, bad at all. You won that. four. You beat Celtic, Shakhtar. Atletico Madrid and Marseille. You drew against Copenhagen at home. So I lost the games that I thought I oh, were going to yeah. lose. So there we go. But what about oh, that DFB so Pokal final? That one. Oh, extra time. You took them to extra time. The one team you don't want to face in the final. Yeah. That is the last kick of the game as well. You're 1-0 up. In a, with a penalty again. With a penalty. <laughs> I can only score penalties in the finals. Yeah. Oh, that is harsh. Yeah. Very close to another three points there. It's a cracking season still, though. I think if you're a Frankfurt fan, which in case you didn't know, I am. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a really good season. Second place. I'll, it, I've improved. Oh, okay. I've improved again. <laughs> yeah. So, um, or right, I didn't win the cup, but I got to the final again. Yes. So I feel that was an improvement on the whole season. I agree. Really. Yeah. Getting through the Champions League when you're not really expected to no, be amazing in it. Bonus, wasn't it. Yeah. Really? Losing unfortunately to a terrible team, but there you go. And then goals wise, Mitrovic 32 in 37 total games is huge. That proved to be a big, big signing for me. Yeah. Mamouche still had a good season as well after obviously a cracking season last year, but playing more of a midfield than what he was as a striker from yeah. last season and uh, 15 for Mayoral was as a as a like you know a secondary striker is great yeah Maximin doing really well in his first season in the Bundesliga and that loan signing was quite good yeah so there we go pleased with that season yeah I would be hopefully too it's, hopefully it's good enough to keep, get a more few more points on you yeah, yeah, I mean, 69 points is a tough tally to beat yeah I'll have to see what we can do transfer budget wise yeah, I got it, though. Yeah, up Been to in the League, So, pays to get into that Champions League and have a half-decent season, doesn't it, in there? Absolutely. I've got a very tough season to beat. Can I do it? Need to get more than 69 points. Need to finish second or higher. Now, adding on to my 89 million or whatever it was, I sold Chaibi for 3.2 and Kang In Lee to Fenerbahce for 19 million pounds, which allowed me to spend a total of 108 million. And I spent 50 million pounds almost on a Wolves midfielder, Joe Gomez. But he looks insane. Very good player indeed. Yeah, his Those mentals, mentals are out of the world, aren't they? Oh. Jesus. That is world-class mental yeah. attributes. So, cracking player, only 25, 50 million. I think it's definitely worth it. And he's got a goal and assist already this season. Not bad at all. He's actually playing the championship two years ago. So, I'm more than happy to bring him into the side. 
even though I spent a lot of money. Etienne Green, a favourite of ours. Yeah, yes, playing yeah. Playing goal. Yeah. So that was a good sign-in, to be fair. Four conceded in three. It's not bad. He got 16 clean sheets for San Etienne last season. So he's in the second division, but never mind. Josh Doidge plays for Hellas Verona. 14 million is a Scottish left back great crossing ability and that's what i really need when you play these types of strikerless tactics you need good crosses of the ball yeah because that's ultimately how you're going to get your goals you're going to get your full backs forward spread it out wide i mean it's physical really good as well weren't they absolutely yeah so needing to be bombing up and down the pitch which is exactly what he does and this one is my favorite signing out of all four of them because Tommaso baldanzi from by leverkusen not only weakens by leverkusen but i've stolen what i think is one of the best players in the league for only 33 million pounds good a season after they spent 26 two seasons ago in the syria he got 20 goals good that's mental yeah so i'm annoyed that i didn't buy him the season before because he could have been crucial for me in that third season and maybe potentially has stopped you from winning as many points as what you did yeah but yeah he's fantastic phenomenal player can do everything really in that center attacking midfield he could be a game changer for me tactically it's changed again I've got a striker. No, you actually didn't, you, I think. I don't got a striker. I, I, I didn't think you'd go all five seasons playing strikerless. All right. The player role is still very similar in terms of it's a deep line forward on attack. I mean, he, he is, is still going to drop. He is a good striker though. As yeah, well, he scored you know. 15 goals yeah. last season, but he is still a creator. Uh, and he will drop off into that position and allow Baldanzi and allow Jao Gomez and Sheldrup to make the runs past him. Yeah. I still got Andre and Larson in that midfield there, so they're looking good. I would say now my only real weakness maybe is Francis. Because at the back there, he's good, but he's not like a first team quality next to yeah. Pacho who in mine I've been using season after season and he's been incredible for me that might be my one position now that I'm looking a little bit weak because I'm really happy with this team so again the idea is to get the ball into Xerxes who drops deeper in behind the midfield and in between the defense and midfield and allow the other runners to make the runs past him to hopefully open up the defense yeah has that been working at the start of the season i think so but i think i've just been really unlucky because i mean somebody 14 nil that's weird because i started off with 10 nil didn't i in the cup yeah so. so that was a big one baldanzi got a hat tricks Xerxes got two yeah everybody was chipping in uh, but then i lost to Bayern munich from a harry kane penalty but that's, you know we've got to take that on the on the on the head really and just say that's that's that result in it you, yeah it's gonna you come up against them you're not gonna catch them in a bad season are no. you? and then i rescued what i thought well i scored Ooh. in the 82nd conceded the 87th <laughs> <laughs> scored what I thought was the winner in the 93rd, conceded from kickoff. Really unlucky. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, glad back, I conceded in the 67th minute. Never mind. That's just a bad result, that one. Let's have a look at my Champions League fixtures. There's a team that I was quite surprised to see in there. Brighton, who usually on Football Manager get relegated. Yeah, they do, don't they? So Brighton's in there. Real Madrid, both Madrids. In fact, Slavia Prague, Villarreal. <laughs> Barcelona, Monaco, Legia of Orsava. Lots of Spanish teams in there, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, four Spanish teams in total. Let's see what I can do against them. Of course, I need to be a second place finish and 69 points. Can I do it? Let's have a look. Oh, it's exactly the same. I don't believe that. I thought I'd done you easy this time. You can't write that, can you? <laughs> The exact same points as well. And no, we're not going down to goal difference or teams <laughs> no, one. No, no, no. We're just going to say much, nobody wins that point. That is crazy, though, I isn't can't it? believe that. 82 points to buy minutes, so they are still somewhere ahead of me. But, oh, 69 I hope I don't points lose on a as point. well. I hope I don't lose by a point now. Yeah. Okay, so Baldanzi had the tightest amount of goals to me there. By minute dominated the average rating. They had a good amount of assists from Jamal Musiala, who also got the, one of the highest amount of goals and the highest player of the matches. So he did really well. Didn't really have anybody involved. What about the competition still? Maybe this can make or break a season. No. Yes. Awful. In fact, I got knocked out by Dortmund as well. Yeah. Which makes it even worse, getting knocked out by carving your own country. Yeah. Second round by Schalke. That's atrocious. And oh, yeah, it's a bad season overall, really, in terms of points. Uh, I'm second and you call points. it a bad season. Well, it is, though, isn't it? <laughs> I come second for and I had a great season, yeah, even though yeah. I lost in the cup final. It is, it is a bad <laughs> season. Finished down in 21st, so I, did, I was quite lucky, really, to qualify because I only won three and I drew one. 
to Legia Warsaw, which should have been a win. Yeah. I lost four games there. Uh, got tonked by Monaco as well. So that's not the only too surprise happy. one I think is the Monaco one, really. Yeah. So yeah, I'm a little bit gutted with that one, really. 20 goals from Baldanzi, 20 goals from Joshua Xerxes, 13 and 10 for Joe Gomez, uh, who is by far and wide my best player right yeah. now. So. I need to capitalise on that with the money of £86 million again. So my second season with roughly about £90 million. I need to make it a big one in season number five. Precious, Let's have a look at the points. really on me now, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that final season. No change on the points after season number four. It's still Omega Luke with five. Omega Dab with four. So we go into the final season. Well, somebody's been very busy yeah. in this uh, transfer window, the summer window. Uh, you sold Mitrovic, Dad, for 80 million. Mate, it's 32. And I'm not going to turn down 80 million for a 32 year old. It's mental to have to get him on a free. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I was like, oh, do I really want to sell my best striker? He's just mm. done so well for me. But I'm thinking, I'm looking at it thinking, I can buy probably two good strikers for that. Yeah. You know, or at least a really good one and another midfielder player or something like that. Yeah. So that's what I went for it in the end. 80 million it. for 32 euro. I had to do it. And you said that. So another 198 million in total. So there was other players yeah. that you sold. Maximum you got on a free as well. That's, I mean, not to give too much away, tactic-wise, I got rid of him. Okay, so wingers are leaving, as you can see, because yeah. Marmouche and Leon Bailey went as well. Yeah, so that's uh, telling you what the players. Doing. Yeah, and also they were on big wages too. Yeah. You mentioned, oh, I don't want to, you know, I could buy more players for that. You spent 69 out of the 80 on his replacement in but Skamaka. What a striker this is, though, eh? He's good. Yeah. But will he give you the same amount? I, I don't know, but it's, it's finishing as an 18, mate. He's, yeah, he's he is a good. good striker. So 13 goals last season in 33 appearances it's a bit, at Atalanta. A bit of a gamble, but yeah. I think it's worth the gamble. Hasn't played a game for you just yet, which does surprise me. Maybe he was injured, I guess. Uh, yeah, he's just coming back from yeah. fitness. He's been injured. But what a surprise. Another player I, I, I get in quite a lot from my team, innit? He's on a freebie. I'm, I'm going to get him in, and I? More times than Cassie at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cassie's like, what the fuck? Bro, <laughs> the problem was I needed more centre backs than I needed mid midfield players. So yeah. Kessie wasn't even on my phone list this time. Uh, Mateus Franca from Crystal Palace, sixty-five million pounds is a pleased, lot of money. Pleased with this signing as well. Yeah, good midfielder though. Good physicals. Then it was Skamaka, of course. Bart Verbruggen from Brighton. Yeah. Brighton's keeper. I like him as well. He's a good keeper, isn't he? Yeah, good kicking and passing ability. Yeah. So very good on well, the ball. I was thinking, you know, I'm strengthening anything out, everything up, except for my goalkeeper. So I, I spent a lot of money on him. Yeah. But I always think if you can get a really good, strong keeper in, you're, with, you're in a chance of doing really well. Mm, absolutely. I think you're bringing in Endrick on loan. I couldn't believe it. I got Cheat this. code. I couldn't believe I got this on loan. I, I just put it in and I thought, oh, try me look. And they... They let me have him, so yeah. oh, I'm taking that. Fair play. Same as Warren Zaya Emery. Really good centre midfielder yeah. on loan. So bringing in a couple of good players using the loan market there. Mailing, which was a free transfer. So on that left-hand side. Strengthening the a, squad there, I think. Yeah. Uh, Hator, who does the same for the right-back yeah. role. I mean, you had to pledge your allegiances to Arsenal at some point. <laughs> I don't see you signing any Spurs players. Gone for Emile Smith-Rowe again. Yeah. So uh, my yeah. Arsenal friend will be messaging me once again, okay, sending me yeah. a voice note. Yeah. Because the last time you signed him, I had a voice note from my Arsenal yeah. friend saying, tell your dad to keep his mitts off of <laughs> Emile Smith-Rowe. It was a lot more violent than that voice. Yeah, it was a than bit, that, yeah. But there we go. So Emile Smith-Rowe, you signed him again. Yeah. If you want a really good midfield player and it's not too dear, go to Arsenal. <laughs> uh, and then finally, Manuel Akanji back in the Bundesliga, of course, because yeah. he played for Dortmund a while back. But for £12 million, hasn't played a single game of football for years. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe that when I seen that. So, all right, I got him in. He'll yeah. do a good job. Tactic, as you mentioned, you've got rid of the wingers, brought them inside. Yeah gone really tight now to sort of make that midfield really solid uh, one's attacking there so I'm quite happy with this tactic really alright Endrick on the left Skamaka on the right up front there Octavio drops down into a ball winning midfielder alongside Beltran uh, who you've just have you just signed him yeah he did 38 minutes I don't know whether we mentioned him or not but you brought in Beltran anyway yeah it's a strong team Yeah. ending with a very strong team for sure there's a couple of players there that drop down to the bench like Florentino Luis who you have had transfer listed for £40 million pound. <laughs> can't get rid of him Moyaral who's been quite good for you across the, the seasons that yeah. we've had so far. He drops down to the bench as well. You can understand that with the two strikers I've got. Yeah, next, absolutely. So, yeah. Let's have a look then at your schedule. How you been getting on? Right, okay. So lost on penalties, which is not a bad 
no. thing whatsoever. Jane Talk. Sancho's at Bayern Munich. Yeah. He's a scumbag and he don't care, does he? And I went 1 0 up as well. Yeah, he did. So, I'm, I mean, I was ple- even though I lost, I was still pleased with that result because it first game of the <clears> season, <throat> new tactic. It proved it worked, so yeah. I, I owed him to a draw, really. Uh, you also missed a penalty during that game uh, from Thiago Almeida. 7-0 against this team here. Gladbach 5-1, 6-1 against Bochum, 5-1 against Union Berlin. Somebody is scoring a lot of goals here. So it showed me the tactics working. Yeah, because yeah. Endrick has six goals in three ge- seven goals in three games now. An 8.77 average rating. <laughs> Silly. So, Champions League fixtures. Let's have a look. Galatasaray, PSG, Sociedad Leon, Barcelona, Arsenal, Dortmund, and Salzburg. Not easy. No. I was hoping it would be a little bit easier than that. So Yeah, I, you've got I, a few really tricky I'm ones. Gonna, in I'm there. gonna struggle really. I mean you look your PSG, your Barcelona, Arsenal, they're they're games I don't think I'm gonna win. Yeah. So I've just got to I'll get something out of the other games really. Playing against Dortmund as well. Yeah. In I the mean, league phase. The, the way I've set my team up now, I would, I'm a little bit confident that I could beat them. Okay. There's only one way to find out. The points are really close. I even think the points tally might be quite close too when we add up yeah. for that for the final three points. Dad, season number five. Let's see how you get on. Oh, he's gone and done it. By a point. How much did you pay by a minute to flump this season? <laughs> 72 points. Mate, I only lost three games. Yeah, drew 10 though. I know, I, was, I nearly chucked it away with that, <laughs> didn't I? Didn't lose to Bayern Munich. I mean, you look at the end of the finish and I had, I lost one and drew one. Yeah. So I nearly chucked it away. You drew against them twice, 1-1 one, yeah. one and 0-0. Nil, nil. Oh, I can't believe that, you spawny sod. They were getting 90 points in the other season and then you're getting 72. Straight away, that's four points added on. Of course, if you do finish higher, it's another point for getting that. So 73 points added to your total towards that three extra bonus points. You had the top scorer of the league with 19 goals. Skamaka had the second highest average rate and Thiago Almeida with 15 assists as well. Yeah. It's a cracking season, but did you manage to cap it off with a cup win? No. no. Oh, second round. I know, I was so disappointed. <laughs> when I lost it, I thought, I can't wow. believe I lost that. No. Uh, round no. of 16 by PSG. Kind of as you expect, I guess. 6-3 yeah. to them. Did you play in the... Pl- no, so you actually went through the league phase. Fifth place. Won six games. Oh, you stuffed them all. Stuffed Arsenal. Stuffed yeah. Barcelona. Wow. Drew one against Leon 4-4. Lost... 10-1! <laughs> I bet when you drew against them in the round of 16, you were like, oh, well. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they went through and won it all. Won it all. Probably. Uh, no, Chelsea did. Oh, did they? Chelsea went through and beat Barcelona in the oh. final. What I do want to see is when you played against them, uh, so he didn't score there. Max Min did, though. Yeah. You beat them 1-0 in the second leg, but in the 10-1, do they still have Kolo Muani? Did he score? No. So I wonder whether Kola Mouani then is not at PSG anymore. He's at Chelsea, who went on and won it. Storylines. Yeah. There we go. Uh, how much they signed for? Only just 37 million. Oh, if I'd seen him up for 37 million, I'd been trying to snap him up. <laughs> he is superb. Right, great season, Dad. Yeah. 73 points. Champions. I'm not disappointed with the cup being yeah. knocked out so early against a team like that. But that's Champions. four points, and you are only one point behind me. So right now. You go to eight points. I'm only on five. Yeah. Could be... That's three points gap, by the way. And I've got a lot of points at times. So 73. That's the most points I've got. Yeah. But if I do win those three points while you win the league, we go back to even. <laughs> I just hope we don't win a cup again. Right, let's have a look at my fifth season. See how we get on. Now, Dad, what I failed to realise at the end of my season four was that I lost my number one goalkeeper for 15 million in January. That could have cost my season. So I had to replace him at the start of this season. Season, but I've also brought in some friends as well. Yeah. Starting off, Beto on a free transfer. I think it's the first time I've used him in FM24. <laughs> he, of course, he was my favourite player of FM23. Brought him in on a free transfer. He has had some cracking seasons, albeit some of them in the championship, though. 19 goals in the Premier League there, 12 in the previous season. He hasn't got a goal for me yet, which may be a little bit worrying, but still. Antonio Blanco is another player on a free two, and he is cracking. Yeah. Gets forward whenever possible, which is for a centre midfield on attack, exactly what I need. And he's another one. 
who scored a lot of goals in different divisions too. The goalkeeper I brought in was Turati for quite a good price, to be fair, for a 25-year-old, 20 million. Got 11 clean sheets last season. He's got two already for me. You know already I'm leaving one player to the end. <laughs> yeah. Nicholas Villuz. I haven't really heard of him before, but I needed a good centre-back backup. And I brought him in for 9.5 million. Who's pound. he backing up? He is backing up the one and only Antonio Silva. My favourite centre-back. He is in my team. £49 million. It was worth every single penny. <laughs> he is a cracking player right now. So there we go. Tactically, I've changed it again. And I've gone for this. So it's almost a 4-3-3, but I've gone for a complete advance forward. Two centre midfielders on attack, a shallow striker, an inside forward. It's very attacking. I've almost done what you do and neglect the supporting roles, yeah. but I haven't. I've got two supporting roles in the fullback and the goalie. But let's have a look. We've got Sheldrop on the left, Beto up front, Baldanzi on the right, Jao Gomez and Blanco in that midfield. Andre steps in that ball winning midfielder on defense, but of course got great backups in Hugo Larson. Francis actually goes to the right, which I am surprised with. Now that we've got Silva and Pacho at center back, Doidge on the left, Torati in goal. And that means schedule wise, I have actually lost the game 1 0 to Mines. But I followed that by beating Bayern Munich 5 0. Oh, they ain't going to have a bad season this season for you as well, are they? 5 0. <clears> but. <throat> Then I drew nil nil. Yeah, that's a bit of a bad one, isn't it? What is happening? I don't know what's going on with this season. I can't work out whether this tactic's good or not. No. Champions League fixtures. Juve, Gorica. Who the hell's that? Croatian team. Fenerbahce, Liverpool, Sporting, Valencia, Roma and Arsenal. To cap Hard things two off. Games. Hard last two games. Very hard. I need something big this season to stop you from winning the league. Or winning the whole competition. Yeah. Because uh, you've gone three points ahead of me being a point behind and winning the league on one point above that so four points gains you three points ahead of me and i need a big season i just hope you don't win this champions league but currently i'm in me. ninth let's see season number five let's simulate it and see how i do final season and i also won the league oh, I don't know. <laughs> and i did it with a lot more points than what you did as yeah. well with 80 points in total i mean i had a bad season again i did, did. Didn't need him to do that for you. Lost four games, lost as well to Bayern Munich, but we got the business done. We got it done. Beto with 24 goals, Baldanzi with 16. I've got peppered players all over this. Player statistics, which was the first time I've managed to do that. Competitions, do I crown it with a cup? Oh. Round 16 by Arsenal. <laughs> Augsburg in the final. Nuremberg in the semi. Dortmund in the quarterfinal. That's Bayern Munich were out of it yeah. early. They were out of it in the second round. They knocked that glad back there. That second round, they were eliminated by Leipzig. You should have done a double there, shouldn't you? I should have, yeah. That would have crowned it for me. 45 goals from Beto. 24 from Baldanzi. 17 from Jao Gomez. Shelled up with 11 and 19. It was a cracking season. Transfer budget-wise for anybody who wants to take over the save game file on Patreon or the channel memberships. Remember, channel memberships, you also get sometimes to watch some of the videos earlier. And of course, there's a podcast on both platforms too for the same amount of cost. It is to get the save game files. We do weekly podcasts talking about everything. 72 million pound if you want to take over the save game file. Mine, that probably has run about the same. But let's have a look at at the total points, including all of the points tally added up to give us that three extra bonus points. So the season points are Omega Luke with five, Omega Dad with four, but the total points is Omega Luke with 10, Omega Dad with eight. However, the three extra bonus points, Omega Luke's total points across the five seasons amounted to 332, whereas Omega Dad's was just short on 311. Leaving the extra three points to Omega Luke to put the total tally on 13 to 8. It was close, Dad, considering how bad your first couple of seasons were. It was down to the bonus points at the end, really, wasn't it? I think your first season where you stuffed me by about 10 points, yeah. 11 points, and your second season, uh, your last season, yeah, you, you beat me by a lot of points again. Those, those two seasons done me. 
Yeah. And if you remember the first season, you won the cup as well, didn't you? That's right. So yeah. You started off with a bang. Yeah. And I didn't. I, I got better as I was going, but you started with the bang and it put you in that in that in that position to go ahead. Yeah. And you kept it you kept ahead all the way, so well done. It is funny how in both ones that we've done so far that the total points, extra three points, can make a difference in who wins. I could, it. If it'd been the way around, I would have won. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That just shows strikeless prevails <laughs> once again. <laughs> but remember to keep letting us know what clubs you want to see us to do this format with, as well as of course the actual version in the same universe where we're usually picking rivals and stuff in the same league and make sure you are checking out things like glory hunter check out manscape.com forward slash omega luke if you want to pick up all of your manscape products and we'll see you on the next one bye bye